Hi everyone, it's Ashley again from Saint Soaps slash I'm Saint Viral. So I'm going to be showing you the video today of how I made the soap War of the Roses, which was a exclusively themed soap made for the World Jousting Championships, which is the event I'm at right now. We can hear the commentator in the background, the jousting's going on, and I thought I'd film on location, I guess. Can't really see much, it's really muddy. The jousting's over there in the background and is my soap products but yeah not a lot of customers around so I'm doing a quick video thought I'd share so I hope you enjoy the video a very history themed one um, if you think that it's a great idea for me to do more history videos let me know down in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and also to follow me on my other social medias where you can actually see beforehand the soaps that I'll be making and videos that come here on Saint Soaps channel but also if you have any suggestions that'd be good let me know okay guys Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Alright everyone, how are we today? Yay, I'm glad everyone's good. I can hear you all talking back to me. So, obviously I'm here today and I have my friend here with me. His name's Robert. There, <laughs> there's the thumb. You may have seen his hand, his, his thumb, appear in a previous video. Um, Rob helps me out at events that I go to and um, yeah, so he's good fun. So, we're here today and I'm going to be making the soap. He's watching but checking it out. It's kind of like my little apprentice, I guess. My little apprentice. Hey, that little though. No, he's a he's a big man. Um, so today we're going to be making that. Um, what soap are we making? The War, uh, War of the Roses soap. <laughs> I was like, I have a bunch of soaps I'm making today. And I'm like, which one are we making? Sorry, we're making the War of the Roses soap today. So I've got my oils, my melted oils here. I've got my mixture of hard and soft oils here. So they're all at liquid consistency. They're all at room temperature and I have my lye water here, which is also at room temperature. So we're going to mix that together. Um, we're going to blitz it just a little bit with the blender just to make sure that all the bits are broken up and mixed. But because I want it to be quite liquidy, because we're going to be doing um, a swell like marble pattern in it uh, with two colors today, I do want it to be liquidy. So we're going to be mixing the rest of it up with the spatula and incorporating the colors that way so I'll just mix it up together now and then we'll go from there okay so I've just mixed this up slightly and so Oh, no, it's all right. Okay, so I've got an empty bucket here. We're going to pour off a little bit of this. So we're going to be doing um, a white and a red mix together. I've got this one here. Okay. Um, so what we're going to be doing is, is this is based on the medieval event in England, the English Civil War called the War of the Roses. And so this happened between, I think, 1455, possibly, or four. 1445 to like 1487 and so it was like an on off fight between two houses of England called um, House of Lancaster and the House of York. So they used um, a bunch of symbols and emblems for their houses but most well known for them were the two rose symbols one each for them and they were one of the House of York was white and the House of Lancaster was red. So they were actually um, descendant from the same house, from the same royal house that had claims on the throne. Um, and they, yeah, split off at some point, became the two separate houses and then decided to fight with each other over who should rule England. So eventually a few um, generations down the line, um, descendant from the Lancasters and the Yorks came along Henry VIII, Henry Tudor, which we're all familiar with. So the Tudor Rose, which was an emblem, was actually a combination of the two houses and it's white in the center and red around the edges. So that's like pretty cool, something cool to like a bit of history, you know, to figure out. So I was really inspired by, well, I knew that leading up to the World Jousting Championships that are happening, I wanted to make an event, a themed soap for the event. I usually do that for major events that I go to. And so I was like, I've been watching the TV show The White Queen recently with my friend and I was like, hey, War of the Roses. That's that's a good, good idea. So we are going to be mixing the two colors together. We saw that I put white in this one and red in this one. This is red wine mica. So it's gonna make it a nice, rich, dark color. And what we're doing is, is 
going to be pouring this into here but not mixing it afterwards and then completely um, just pouring it in so it will have a nice red swirl hopefully kind of like a bit of a marble swirl in the white so it's going to be a lovely color hopefully or I mean hopefully it will be it will be so this is actually my third time making this batch the other two I wasn't quite happy with them but you know that's the whole point of when you first start making a brand new product is you experiment you figure out what works and what doesn't work and you go from there so I know that I really was so excited about the idea of having um, roses on soap so I have a beautiful rose mold which I got from I think I got it from a cake store actually it's a silicone mold and so I use that to make the cold process roses which are going to go on top of these soaps so this will be a high top soap the body of the soap is going to be white with red and then white frosting on top and red roses and the scent mm, the scent is delicious smelling so I will talk about that in a second but because we've also done this, I'm trying to keep it nice and liquidy still because, again, I'm going to pour this red into the white. We need to make sure that that doesn't mix in too much. And if I use the blender, this is going to accelerate it. And I don't want it to harden up too quickly before I poured it properly. Otherwise, it becomes unusable. And basically what it does is if something accelerates in the soap batter, it just means that you have started the next step, if you want to say of the soap sooner than you wanted to. So acceleration refers to, like I said, um, how hard, how quickly the soap hardens up and it starts to set. Um, and that's the lye reacting with the oils and turning the oils into soap. So it's, yeah, it's, if, you, if it's still in the buckets when it starts to solidify, you've just got a bucket of soap. And sometimes it is very hard to get out of the container I will I will let you know I will I have I have had that happen before and sometimes you just got to put a glove on and scrape it out with your hand so it's not not the best it's not the most fun thing ever but again you learn as you and you learn and you grow so fragrance wise I will be using a delightful blend called sandalwood and vanilla so this is like super nice it was it's not too sweet because of the vanilla, but it's also not too earthy because of the because of the sandalwood. So it balances it out. It's it, it, it out nicely. So I've just used half a bottle there. I know what my measurements are on there because I'm pretty precise when I use the first half of the bottle. So whatever's left is whatever's left. So once I've mixed this in, again using the spatula to make sure that things are mixed in properly, but not too fast. Um, I will then pour the red into the white and I have my mold ready it's already measured up with all its markings for the slices it's it's lined and everything ready to go so we'll pull that up in a second and yeah it's a pretty easy pattern to do so the hard work I guess if you want to say is just making sure you keep an eye on the consistency of the soap as you make it when you pour in the fragrance oil as well, you really do, I can still see like there's a line of fragrance oil there. You really want to make sure that you're scraping around the edges and also around the bottom of the container to make sure that there's nothing stuck there, that you've mixed in all of the fragrance oil and that's why scraping down the sides is so important. Whoops, there's a bit of a splash. It's so important is not only is it because of the fragrance, but if there's any extra colorant that's stuck to the sides, you want to scrape that down and make sure that it's all mixed in. Something to also be aware of with fragrance oils that can also um, change the acceleration of your soap in the creation process. Afterwards, after it's been, it's been made and it's set, you let it to cure for a certain amount of time. I leave mine for about a month to a month and a half, depending on the type of soap it is, etc. And during cure time, that's a good good time to let it sit because it allows you to tell if the color has changed at all in the soap and the fragrance has changed. You let it cure, you let it set, because sometimes the color, I mean the, the fragrance oil can actually change the color of the soap as well. So uh, vanillas usually turn soaps, if things have vanilla tones in it or are vanilla based, turn colors very dark brown so just be aware of that if you plan on making soap that it may change color from what you originally had in mind 
Okay, so I've got my mold all set up here. So I'm just going to pour, I'll show it on camera more, sorry. I'm just gonna pour the red straight into the white. Let me, no, nah, it'll be right. So I'm gonna be pouring from this side, the handle is on this side. So I'm just gonna pour it like, just in like one spot. It will move out itself. So I've used only a little bit of the red, like when I measured it out, because last time I did do like half and half of the white and the red, and I just found that it was kind of like, a, I think it was a little bit too much. Like I don't want this to make, make it too prominently white or too prominently red, but it was a little too mixed for my liking. So this time around, I'm definitely just gonna drop it straight in the bucket and then not mix it with the spatula. I did that last time too and it made it a beautiful like almost a faded red. It kind of reminded me of strawberry jam. <laughs> but yeah, that one wasn't quite the pattern I was going for. So this is more of it. So I'm excited to see how this one turns out. So I just dropped it straight in. Got the spatula ready for after. And then we're just going to pour straight in and we're going to see the white come through and then the red fall in there as well. It's beautiful! Okay, so still got quite a bit left in the bucket, so I'm going to scrape that out and just add it to the top. doesn't matter so much to me what the top looks like because we will be covering it in icing. So the higher you hold the bucket as well, you'll often find um, it's called a drop swell where um, artists will drop. They might have a colour already in there and then they'll hold the other colour up high and they will drop it straight in like this. It's called a drop swell pattern. So that's wasn't our main aim for today but it doesn't matter I don't mind that I do want the colors to still be separate but I do want them to be mixed together so this is working good there's a lot more definition between the two colors this time around so which I'm quite happy about so we've just done this now so what we're going to do is I'm going to just tap it down off camera to make sure that there's no air bubbles in it it's nice and even and smooth and then probably in about an hour or an hour or two to two hours later we're going to come back and we'll pipe the icing on top the reason for that being that it started to set started to solidify it's still very liquidy right now so by waiting an hour or two we've allowed it to to harden up and it will provide a good base for putting the icing on top okay so this is the top of our loaf of soap it looks really pretty and um you can just see down there we have like a lot of white down the side and then the red comes in because we poured it it made its own pattern so in the bag here we have some white titanium dioxide colorant that has been mixed into the icing it does it's still like a little bit soft so but it's holding a shape a bit in the bag so we're going to go through and pipe and then we're going to be adding rose embeds on top of after that so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Take my hand and hold it tight. Look at the paintings, I'll be your guide. Oh, that's very nice. They look like those um little meringue kisses. Yeah. Don't stop looking in my eyes. Are you? So we're back now with the War of the Roses soap and oh it is so pretty. I mean look at the top of the icing on that like I think this is the best icing I have ever done. Like it's so smooth and cute and it fits in and everything. So we can see on the sides now that we've taken it out of the mold the lovely marble texture that we have going on between the red and the white which is exactly what I was after. 
Oh, beautiful. So glad it turned out like that. So I'm excited to cut into this. So we'll go through and I'll cut a slice and I'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. And then after that, I'll continue slicing it up and we'll do a little sped up montage for you to watch some more slices. And here is the finished product oh my gosh how cute are these I am so excited I couldn't wait after I cut that first slice I disappeared and I showed my mom I was just so excited with how it looked this is perfect so this took me this is my third batch trying to get this this soap how I wanted it and I got quite frustrated and I felt a little discouraged I didn't understand why the first two batches weren't working out and who knows who knows that's definitely something i have to look into to see if i've done something wrong but this third one oh my gosh look at it it is so cute it's perfect i'm so proud of myself with the icing on top um i'm definitely been trying to continuously improve on that and then the marble swirl inside far out it's so good it smells like a sandalwood and vanilla and it's a beautiful subtle fragrance it's not overpowering at all and I think it goes perfectly with it of course you see the roses on top and you kind of think oh rose scented nah -uh, but it smells just as good this limited edition soap will be brought out for sale again at Winterfest 2019 for the details about that event and more be sure to follow me on my social medias which will be linked down below if you'd also like to check out more soap videos, be sure to check out the rest of them on my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe.